Hello and welcome to the October edition of Today from the Heart. I'm Hillary. And I'm Anna, and we're broadcasting from the David J. Bloom Broadcast Suite. We are so excited to be your anchors this year and show you all of the great pieces in this month's episode. Today we will show you everything from the El Camino pilgrimage this past summer to an unusual surprise in the upper school hallway. Let's start off by meeting a new senior, Marguerite, and hear about her journey as a talented dancer. I'm Marguerite and I really like to dance. I do a lot of ballet. So before Sacred Heart, for the past three years, I was doing online school so that I could dance more and you know dance during the days and also be a part of a company. So I wasn't being paid, but I was allowed to perform with them. And so it was part of my training. Ballet has disciplined me for sure and made me more independent because when you're on stage, you're alone. So you can only depend on yourself, really. One of my proudest things is that I've been to the Paris Opera Ballet School for a summer intensive it's twice. So that was really incredible. It was really amazing to learn from all the great teachers there. My most fulfilling moment was probably when I got a callback to the Juilliard School. It was the first time that I had auditioned for them. So it was just really exciting to see that all my hard work was going somewhere. Up until this year, I was dancing with Ballet de Zemmerique, um, and so the director is Carol Alexi, and so she has a, a company and a school. I was usually going to the studio every morning, and I would do my schoolwork for about two hours, and then I would have class for maybe three, four hours. So I'm going to a different school now, which is called the Ballet Class. And so I'm only going about three, four times a week. And I mean, I still, I still really enjoy dancing. I'm just not reaching for the goal of being a professional. And you know, I'm just doing it much less. I decided to come to Sacred Heart because I am sort of changing paths. Um, so instead of becoming a professional ballet dancer, I'm just going on a regular road to, to go to college. Well, in the future, it's probably gonna be an extracurricular activity for me. Um, I still enjoy it, and even in, in college, if there's classes, I'll probably take some. Wow, that is really impressive. Thank you, Ellie. Did you know some of our faculty members have been at school for over 20 years? Let's see how times have changed here at Sacred Heart. The biggest change since I first came would be in the size of the school, I think. When I came in the early 90s, there were less than 100 girls in the whole high school. We have quite a few new teachers. Um, we also have a brand new athletic center. What I like about working at Sacred Heart, I think, would be the people, the community. That's the most um, important. A really fun, good memory was um, when the Giants won uh, and we had some Giants players come and the cup was here, as well as the Yankees too. We had their cup and Joe Girardi came, and it was a really, that was a really fun time. My first couple of years here, the male faculty members used to take roles in the plays. So I remember I was part of The Sound of Music with Mr. Peter Clark, who was a Spanish teacher here, and I, was, I played the role of an, a German admiral, and he was a guy named Herr Zeller. For years after The Sound of Music, whenever I'd see Mr. Clark, he'd, he'd call me, Admiral! because that was my role, and I'd call him Herr Zeller. So it was really fun. When the broadcast suite was built, it was a tremendous addition to, um, to the film program here at Sacred Heart. Ms. Stewart had this classroom way down at the end of the upper school building, which is now the middle school commons room. And I used to teach in that classroom with her, and like the students would come in, they'd like creep in uh, during class to like grab equipment or sometimes Miss Stewart would and she'd just have this look on her face like I'm so sorry I'm coming in to get the equipment. The core center used to be in room 334, the music room, and it was really small and it was kind of a seniors only place. It's been amazing to watch how this school has grown over the last 26 years since I've been here, but at the same time to realize that it has stayed the same in terms of the type of school we are and what our mission is. Thank you so much, Madeline and Olivia. Over the summer, a group of seniors took a trip to Spain to participate in the pilgrimage El Camino de Santiago, 
This piece gives a look into what it was like to be a part of the 65 mile walk. We started walking in a small, a very small uh, town called Ferreiros. It's the 100 kilometers before Santiago. Yeah, hola. I was excited that I was taking a group of uh, Sacred Heart students, Spain, my, my home country, and to take them to this, this amazing opportunity. What surprised me, so many people from so many countries from all over the world doing the same thing, and everyone so committed to really do it and, and finish it and arriving there, and everybody enjoying it, taking it to the, the fullest. So the first day was the toughest, and we walk about 15 miles, and the rest of the days were like 10, 12, 13. Very, very tired. <laughs> yeah, it was the worst day. It was exhausting. It was, I was concerned, and I was thinking, how am I going to do this? But in no moment, I, I thought that I was not going to do it. Like, four days, fine, I can do this language teacher, the goal is to always make sure the students have an opportunity to leave the language, to take the knowledge outside of the walls of the classroom. And then in addition to that, I wanted to take them to a, a special experience. Because once you, you get closer, it just, just your, your feet don't hurt anymore. You just don't have pains. You just want it to, to arrive. If I had done it with my family or if I had done it with people my age, I don't think I will have that much fun. <laughs> it's interesting to have 17, 16 year old girls that they, they haven't really walked that much neither and their language and the food, that was a, that was a huge uh, adjustment in there. So um, it's just the, the ambience, the environment, the, the, uh, the relations, the, um, the connections with them, that was definitely fun. That looks like a truly unique experience. Thank you, Laura. From rowing to skiing, there are many athletes here at Sacred Heart who dedicate time to their sport outside of school. Let's take an inside look onto the lives of some of these athletes and their day-to-day -day commitments. I horse back ride. I sail. We row for speed. I horse back ride. We ski. I ride every day for an hour and a half. We have practiced three hours a day every day, but the majority of the time that actually turns into a four hour practice. Yeah. And then every day outside of practice, we need to run a 5K. I go every weekend and then in the winter, I like leave for three months and then like ski at a school there. So my dad was a really big sailor growing up and then my older brother sailed throughout high school and college. So I naturally got into it. Literally since I was born, um, my parents, because they thought it was a great idea, as soon as I could stand, they slapped skis on me and they're like, we're going to Vermont! I think I started riding horses really young, like when I was around five, and then ever since then, I just started doing horse shows. I started because I want to be on the water. My barn is 40 minutes away. Uh, four hours. Yeah. But usually there's traffic, so like five. 40 minutes from school, depending on traffic on merit. Leaving school early is not always fun. I definitely want to stay on college and maybe and do an Olympic campaign. I do not think as of now that I'm going to be riding in college, but I want to ride outside of college. I haven't figured that out, but I definitely want to keep riding. Now that's dedication. Thanks, Avery and Leah. Sometimes it's hard to imagine the seniors as freshmen. Let's see how they have evolved over the years. Um, there's huge differences between seniors and freshmen. Um, by the time you're a senior, you've been through all four grades. You know, freshman year, everything's new, everything's exciting, your eyes are wide open, you know, you're the youngest in the upper school. Um, sophomore year, you're kind of riding a wave. Junior year, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to get my work done. And by the time you're seniors, it's like you're over the hump. You know, you're taking a deep breath, you have all these great traditions. So there's huge differences. And, you know, not just, you know, Physically, emotionally, mentally, everything is, you know, night and day between freshman and senior year. So one of the things that I notice between sen a difference between seniors and freshmen is that freshmen seem a little bit less secure about even what they want to do, say, with regard to community service. They are sometimes a little bit less developed in their faith life and not quite as confident sometimes in discussing difficult issues, whereas the seniors 
after they've evolved through the theology department and particularly taken ethics and then experienced senior seminar are able to more deeply delve into issues that are complicated. Well, this year, I think the word I can describe the senior freshman interaction is, is kindness. I see a lot of kindness. So one of the things that I really enjoy is when the seniors come in to see me and I know that they're very interested in just talking to me and has nothing at all to do with the candy. And I know that because sometimes they come into the room and they look at me at my desk and then if the candy jar is empty they just walk right out. So something must really happen in the hallway. I know that chases them out of the room because I know they really just like to talk to me a lot and it's not the lollipops, laffy taffy and nerds that attracts them to me. I've been wondering why the candy jar in Mrs. Bader's room has been so empty. Thanks, Ryan and Anna. The seniors definitely know how to support the color red. Let's see what they've been up to this fall. Wow, I'm not sure how I missed a red dinosaur in the hallway. Thank you, Christina, Olivia, Charlotte, and Ava. Well, that's a wrap. From our heart to yours, thank you for watching today from the heart. <laughs>